everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Culture with the Hosses. Uh, we just finished pouring a garage, and they're taking care of the finishing on that. It's going super good. Uh, so I'm on to our next project. I uh, brought the new machine out today. I'll get this warmed up, and we're going to prep this basement and garage. So let me get this started, unchained, and uh, get going. I... Uh, Got stopped by the DOT the other day. <clears throat> These lights get hit, and they were real chintzy tin. Uh, so I cut them off, and I made new. I put quarter-inch tubing on there. Put new lights on it. Somebody already stepped on my brand new paint. I bet it was Steven. Uh, same thing up here. Uh, these were all rotted off. Uh, so I made new corners and put some uh, nice LED lights in there. Finally got my new jack on it. Now I just want to sandblast this trailer and make it look good. It's a good trailer. Just those couple little items were kind of chintzy. So if you're looking at trailers, I always look at the frame and the suspension. Uh, but I also, I mention it because if you pay attention to that kind of stuff, if it's chintzy tin, it'll last about three or four years, especially here in PA where we get a lot of freezing uh, salts on the road. It just rots away real quick. Uh, other than that, it's a good trailer. It was worth saving. Just wanted to mention that. Okay, let's get started. This could be a problem. My bucket is 73 and a half inches, 72, 72. Well, Okay, so I can work up here in the garage. Uh, top of wall is bottom of concrete. So I need a good foot of stone, 8 inches, 8 inches, 10 inches. Uh, I have a 15-ton load coming with some rebar. I better get on the road and get a triaxle coming as well. We're going to need a lot more stone. Uh, so I'll get floor drain set. On this small door, this 9x9 door, I set this floor drain an inch and a half below the floor. Then it'll come back up. And on this 16 foot door, I'll set this drain two inches below the wall height. So everything runs to the drain. Uh, so I'll get this cleaned out and we'll get started. Okay, Cranberry Supply just showed up with my 15 ton load. You can see the rebar in the back. We'll back them right up here, get them nice and close to my work area. So it's nice and dry, no rain, no snow. He'll come right up this hill a uh, little bit of 2A modified on here. Oops, let me wave him up okay. here. Okay, got the tailgate open. That's a barn gate. You just swing it out of the way, and then everything rolls out. Rebar will come out, plop to the side. Be working here in no time. I gotta find my phone and give John a call for another load. Fifteen ton of two B limestone. No dust. All stone. A little frozen. 
So here we have an eight foot door, garage door. So eight foot goes to our top of sill. It steps up an inch and a half. So floor height is an inch and a half higher than that mark. So what I do, I'll take my tape measure and hook it right up here on my floor joist and pull down 132 and a quarter. That is my wall height. So my floor drain height is two inches less than that, two inches greater. So let's see if I can do this and hold the camera. Hook on the floor joist. And it falls off. One more try. So 132 and a quarter is wall height. 134 and a quarter will be my drain height. So once I get that set, I'll take my pencil just mark that all the way around the pipe that way if these get bumped we know to readjust them to my pencil mark so I like to set these first now I know right where to grade to right to the bottom of that to my wall I'll set this one next and I'll get started and set floor drain set there's top of floor drain right there. If this moves, I know right where to put it. I'm going to get that big chunk of concrete out of here. Let's get grading. Okay, I'll try and do some talking here. If it's too noisy, I'll just delete and do voiceover from previous. Uh, these machines are really nice. There's some, there's some hidden features about them. Now, as you notice, I'm coming in, and I'll try and move the camera slow. You can look right through here and see that track. The way they angled this grating, and they purposely did that for visibility out these corners. You can see that track in relation to the wall, in relation to the floor drain. So I just fluff the stone up to the wall height. Give it a little shake back. And then I just take my teeth and I pat it down now I'll still tamp that, but it's not going to go down much. You can come in sideways and sort of sweep it over into the corner. And just float that bucket right over it, pull it back. I do my walls first. not to break out plumbing. Give a little shake right here. Hey, it wouldn't be the first time I had to call the plumber and say, hey, uh, are you busy? But try and keep it to a minimum. And right in this corner, I'll just leave a little bit extra. And we can push that right into the corner. Again, back dragging it, leveling everything up. Packing it. Now you can see what a help that is to have the floor drain set. Now I'm looking for that even plane from wall to drain, uh, inch, inch and a half down. And then back up here, because we have a little crown in the floor. 
remembering where that floor drain is in relation to my track. We don't want to break that. going to leave it for right now as soon as I get some help here there's a big sliding door there we'll go ahead and move that into the house and stone that and we'll start putting this on grade okay here we are we have the laser set up broadcasting a line all the way around the perimeter hopefully you can see that it's a really nice way to set a good height 360 degrees all the way around this we have this outlet box in the floor right in front of the door so I just measure this from the door before we do anything and then when we're done we'll recheck that number uh, 40 and 3 quarter off the inside of the concrete wall start knocking down the highs we brought the 226 today it's the skinniest machine go right through it what do you have save four inches clearance yeah. Four? Okay. All right, so we'll get started. I'll get a little bit of this filmed, and then uh, tomorrow we're going to pour this. And at the same time, we're prepping upstairs. I got that mostly done. Tom's finishing that up. Jim's on leaf detail. And uh, we'll probably pour the garage on Wednesday. If this was summertime, we would do these both together, but we're not real busy, so take it nice and easy on everybody. Thanks, there you go. So I think it'll be better. This needs to come up about an inch and a half. So we're just gonna take it out. That way I don't break this pipe running over it and the electrician can't get his wire in there when we're all said and done. I don't know. Out on the hillside somewhere out of the way, Jim, thanks. So we'll just put that box back in when we're done grading. That's safer. We know our measurement. We know our length. The conduit's all in and glued. Uh, avoid a problem before it happens, right? Okay, the floor's all graded. This is top of floor height right here. So we cut a board to our length. And we nail a block on top. Ah, it's too dark up there. But that, here we go. That is concrete height. And that is grade height. So we're just touching the dirt right there. So that's how we set our height in the middle of the floor. Concrete height and our box. Our box has to be an inch above floor height, so now we know we're good. Same number back as this morning. Uh, I believe it was 40 and three quarter. Right there. 41. 41. 40 and three quarter. Give that a little bump. We're good. Okay, let's head upstairs. Since prep went so well this morning, uh, it is only, is that accurate? Um, daylight savings, we just spring ahead. We just turned the clocks ahead. It's, uh, oh, it's almost 11 o'clock already. Uh, so too early to quit. Uh, we're getting some snow. Just flurries, nothing major, just, just kind of crummy out. So Steve and I uh, are going to go finish up this little project. Uh, they added an elevator to the house. Did you do any videoing when you were there the other day? No. Um, the, Steve and Matt and Jim went over and broke up the concrete floor. We need to lower it 10 inches to make room for the elevator bottom. So we... 14 inches. 14 inches, yes. So then uh, went to the back wall and now we hit the footer for the 
outside for the uh, exterior wall. So we didn't want to take that footer out without, sorry about that, without, uh, you know, an engineer or the builder saying, yeah, take that footer out. So this has been on hold for two or three weeks now. Uh, we have the air compressor, jackhammer. We're going back out and it's right beside the basement we're pouring tomorrow. So it makes sense to get it today so we can pour it all together. It's just a, how big's the room? Four foot by four foot? It's five by six. So it, it's not very big. Uh, so I'll go ahead and tell you what we're doing now so that when we get there, it makes sense. Um, it might be a little bit dark down there, huh? So we, br we brought a light, uh, plenty of air hose, and we have uh, five feet of footer. We need to jackhammer out, get all the debris out, and then uh, pour the bottom for the elevator. So that's what we're up to today. Come on along with us. Okay, so we just backed the air compressor up to the window. As you can see, the hose through the window. Let's head downstairs. This house is, oh boy, 75% done. Try and keep our feet as clean as we can. No muddy shoes in the house. Oh boy, here we go. It's a nice big room, huh? Gorgeous. How's it going? Good. Good. You can see that back wall is all we really need to take off but about a foot by five or six feet this was a closet they changed it into an elevator closet 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 so they thought oh an elevator would be a good good idea here one of those after after construction Okay, all done. Went pretty well. It only took maybe an hour. Uh, down there in that room, I used earplugs. <laughs> Sorry, they're dirty from my hands touching them, my dirty gloves. My ears aren't that dirty. So then I used headphones on top of them along with the respirator. These are pretty good N95, comparable to N95s. You can see how clean the inside is, and that's what you want. If this was full of dust, get a better one. But these are real good. Uh, let's head downstairs. There you have it. It is almost 12 o'clock, so that took just about an hour. Steve's just cleaning a little bit of the debris out. This is just some plastic here. We have some wiggle room on the walls but we were tight in the back. We had to get that straight down, and you can see we're straight down, even under a little, uh, chiseled under a little bit. So 14 down, we'll come up four inches of concrete for a floor. Ready to get out of here? Yeah. All right. Okay, hoses are wrapped up. Just wanna talk real quick. We don't ever wanna get dirt and mud, sand, topsoil, in these hoses it'll go through there and it'll hurt the jackhammer when you're done with them roll them up and always clip these ends together now nothing can get in there a piece of wire tie throw it in the truck now we can get that out hang it up on the shelf where it goes and it won't be in a big knot okay let's get this stuff back to the shop and unloaded I have to put a new flapper on here, it rotted off. So I just set a bucket on there when we're not using it. On the list. The list is getting shorter.
Okay, here we are, morning of the pour. We got about two inches of snow last night. Not a big deal, but it is 24 degrees out. So we have one and a half percent calcium in the truck, hot water, just heat, uh, mixing it, give it a nice thorough mix, get some heat going, let's head inside. Two power buggies, ready to go, all warmed up. So a short buggy, we have a uh, grinder pump right here. I didn't want to pull the truck up close to it. This gets real soft with our over, with our uh, ditch. So play it safe in this cold weather back there. We don't really know what's underneath here. So traction mat straight into that one turn and right around the walls. I'll get you set up talking a little bit. talked about the notch in the board. There is our concrete height. Right, even with that. See how it just marks the concrete a little bit? Now we know we're at the proper height. So we just put our zip strips in. Corner. Concrete always wants to crack off corners. I'm getting a lot of comments on where to put saw cuts, where to put zip strips. Notice our corner. You're going to see a big crack coming right off of there if we don't do something. So zip strip from corner to post, from post to corner. This is center. Concrete always wants to crack center and center. So we're coming off of that corner with a zip strip and we just put it in. You can just see an impression in the concrete. Let me show you. There it is right there in the concrete. Now we'll just trial right over that and in a week you'll see a tiny hairline crack right on cue. A tiny hairline crack center post corner just like I just said. So outside corner if we don't do something it's going to crack. Zip strip corner to corner. So that's why we do that. I'd like to come back in a month and show all these, and I'll get that, but the problem is these floors are so dirty through construction, you'd never see it. Uh, so number two's out there mixing up. We'll be going here shortly. That was 10 yards, one full truck. Uh, so now I just stand back and look. It's gonna be close, that's probably five yards. This is five yards, it's gonna be really close. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I think we're coming up short. Plus the elevator pad. Yeah. So I might go ahead and get, uh, I'll put a phone call in the thrower and say, we may need another truck to be on standby, and I'll call in yardage as soon as I know. Okay, I got kicked off the straight edge. I'm going to start raking. So looking at the edges of the straight edges, edge of the straight edge, I just want to put this concrete right on grade for them as quick as I can.
Okay, so we did make it with concrete, 20 yards, got the whole thing out. A little bit of bull floating, we'll be on there troweling in no time. We can come right in that window, or of course through this doorway. Got the heater going right away. Alright, we'll slide it over. We're going to pour the elevator pad. Fun, fun, fun. I'll try and get some of this. So I'm just measuring down 10 inches. Sorry, looking right into the light. Top of concrete at 10 inches. And right there. Good. So I'll do that all the way around the perimeter. We only need a little bit more concrete. Stan just went up to get another buggy. He'll be right back. So while I'm waiting, I just push some concrete to the back wall. Okay, 10 down is my number. I hear I'm pulling it right now. Probably two more wheel barrels and we are there. Help Matt and Jim on that floor. Okay, there's the elevator bottom, 10 inches down to the top of concrete. Now we'll just put two, four, three forms in and we'll pour a little curb around it. All done. I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to head inside and help those guys get finishing uh, the concrete. It's setting up pretty good. Uh, they could use a hand. Nothing. Too much going on out here today uh, so I'm gonna end the video with that I hope it's enjoyable I hope it's educational and if you like it Emily always says dad you got to start saying it more uh, hit that like and subscribe tell your friends help us grow this channel we're almost at 50k all right have a good day everybody